Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Northampton School Committee with the Student Advisory Council. My name is Ed Zahowski. Uh, I'll be filling in for the Honorable Mayor Darkwitz, <coughs> who's running late. Uh, he'll be with us uh, a little later on. This is Thursday, October 10th, 2019, um, and I would call this meeting to order, seeing that we have a, do, what, should we do roll call? Sure. Vice Chair. Okay, sure. Let's have a roll call. Okay. Let's get credit. Uh, Ms. Molly Burnham? Present. Ms. Rebecca Busanski? Present. Ms. Laura Fallon? Present. Uh, Ms. Ann Hennessy is not here tonight. Mr. Lonnie Kaufman? Here. Mr. Howard Moore? Here. Ms. Susan Voss? Here. Mr. Edward Zahowski? Present. Your Honor, have four. Thank you very much. And welcome to our student representatives. Um, this evening we have on our agenda um, a report and re reports and recommendations, the uh, vaping issue at Northampton High School, and some ideas on how to combat it. So thank that you for being with us tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I've brought with me Maeve Raphael Riley. She's a fellow senior at Northampton High School, and uh, she's going to help me talk about this issue. So, as you said, we're going to talk about vaping and, you know, kind of different ways, what we've noticed and what we think may help combat that. So, so, first off, why are we concerned? This is an issue that has been brought up all over the country and definitely within our school. So, the first death in Massachusetts related to the illness happened a few days ago in Hampshire County. And the first teenage death in the country also happened within a few days in New York. Nationwide, there are 1,080 lung injuries associated with vaping and e-cigarettes, and 15 deaths have been confirmed. So what's happening at NHS? Students are using spaces like the bathrooms and especially in the stalls to vape in private. And that's also creating issues with students not being able to use the bathrooms to go to the bathroom. And some students are even able to vape in the hallways and in classrooms. And many vapes, vapers are doing so because they have become addicted and they need nicotine to get through the day. So this is how that they are getting the nicotine their mm -hmm. vapes. Yeah. And that's kind of what we feel is our most important issue because it's kind of surpassed just the students breaking school rules. It's this it's a health issue. It's they're addicted. And so it's something that we really want to focus on is, is that aspect. Um, so it, there have been a few things that have been put in place in our school to try and combat the issue. Um, so as of last Friday, nine students have been suspended for vaping um, just this year. Um, also, a bunch, the faculty has put up multiple posters um, that provide different resources um, for getting help for addiction and just kind of direct students where to go. Um, however, we feel that because they are simply posters, um, they are being taken down pretty often and uh, the ones that are still up are often just overlooked. You know, it's it's hard for students to really um, pay attention to them and to use them to their to you know for what they're there for. Um, we also were informed that there was a letter uh, written with information on vaping and vaping hotlines, um, where to get help and stuff like that. But it's unclear whether or not that letter has been sent out, as many of our parents haven't received it. Um, so that's another thing. Um, and then, so that's what's been going on at our school, but other schools in the area and statewide have taken different routes. Um, both Quincy High School and Chicopee Comprehensive High School installed vape detectors this year. Um, and they've said that it has really significantly uh, impacted the vaping culture at their schools. Um, and they've been able to decrease it. Um, so that's one thing. And then also, as I'm sure many of you know, Governor Baker has banned all vape products from being sold in the, uh, Massachusetts for four months, and that's in, in going on right now. Um, that specifically, we, you know, I believe has definitely had an impact. However, it's not 
it's not entirely preventing students from being able to, being able to get um, you know vape vaping products. However, because they are able to go to other states and you know they really were obtaining them illegally before, so it's not going to prevent them from obtaining them illegally now. Um, so those are some of the things that we've noticed and and wanted to share with you. Um, so what are our plans, the student union's plans? What are we doing um, for this issue? I think our main goal, what we've really made clear and discussed at our meetings, is that we would like to help really try and combat it first and foremost by spreading awareness about the dangers of vaping and the, all the health issues um, and try and provide as much support as we can to, um, to really help students get through their addiction and to um, and you know maintain a healthier environment at our school. Um, so we are in the process of reaching out to various um, centers and like addiction centers in the area as well as the MPC and Tapestry to see what they may be able to do to help and, and or what they have been doing in the area. And we are also in the process of producing a survey on vaping um, that will hopefully help us get better data about what students, how students are feeling and also um, what students want or what students need, how we can best help them. Um, and then in the future, just some ideas that have been thrown out there by our group is um, an in-school addiction center or a space where students can receive help anonymously um, just and that's one idea and also we've thought about installing vape detectors um, although like it would be kind of it it wouldn't really go along with with helping you know just spread awareness it would be more of it would help more with like a punitive process but we it would help I think I think it would help the school know who is vaping, what is going on, um, and hopefully we would be able to use that to uh, get information directly to the students who need it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're focusing on and thinking about and doing to try and help combat this issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it. Any questions or Mr. Moore? Yeah, so do you have any idea how many kids are vaping and yeah. You know? Um I don't we don't have specific data. I think that's what we're we're assuming the survey will help with. Um do you have a rough notion is it I'd, everybody? I it's not everybody. I would say it's probably maybe a, a third, something like that. A third of the students. Yeah. Um Yeah, that's probably my rough mm -hmm. estimate. And it's people like vaping like different levels some people vape all the time some people it's not as like regular with them so it's really hard to put pinpoint a number mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, I don't know if you heard there was a piece on NPR this morning that was discussing how um, like bubblegum flip like the flavors become more addictive on top of the nicotine too, mm -hmm. just as if for more information that it um, affects and, and kind of specifically the teenage brain, it's working on two right, things right. also. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you when we all start working on this together, I, I know that we've talked about this <laughs> actually for years and um, <clears throat> it's clearly hit a, a penultimate moment and I'm so glad that we can all collaborate but I think that that's another piece to put in in for the informational things too yes yeah I agree Ms. Voss uh, Ms. Fallon then Ms. Brzezinski thank you and thank you for starting the conversation at the beginning of the year um, I'm sure that I'll just say how I feel but um, clearly we need to address this and I, I just have a couple questions to understand it better I, I will say I hang out with lots of high school students and your estimate of about a third is about what I hear and other high school students are definitely concerned about it and I do think it's pretty rampant and um, questions I have include you know I, I really appreciate you're talking about this idea of being punitive versus it's really a health issue where kids are addicted and there's this fine balance and I'm curious what you th well what are the policies or what is what do you see happening if kids get caught are their parent is, is that activity shared with their parent and also are there ways for us I know you you said 
um, an in-school addiction center, but what, what can you imagine in terms of really, I don't know, I, I think a kid who's really addicted is probably not gonna look at a poster and call the number. So yeah. like, how do we get them the help they need? I yeah. guess that's. Um, I think on, on that, um, I, I think what the union has talked about is, is really kind of, I don't wanna say forcing, but forcing the information rather than just trying to get students to come to it themselves. Um, I think it's a lot easier to, you know, when you're, it, when you are addicted to something, it's, it's hard for, um, it's much harder to s seek out help than to, you know, have it come to you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, just making it as accessible as possible and, and using the school as a, as a, like a way to do that, I think that's one thing. Do you have anything to add? Um, I think it also, we mentioned that there was a letter that was drafted that hopefully is going to parents. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the times kids, I mean, part of the issue was that they didn't realize like how dangerous yeah. it could Another. be. Exactly. Yeah, so, and like helping information go to the parents to see if they see signs or just know they're informed about the issue and they mm -hmm. could help their kids or yeah. just at least be informed. Yeah, try and I know other people have their hands. I'm just sitting here brainstorming, but I'm wondering um, to throw out as an idea if Tapestry or um, Prevention Coalition was willing to run something, say, after school or during a period in school, and there could be some peer pressure of, like, you know, you students know which friends are vaping and which aren't, and be like, let me go with you. This isn't your fault. You're now addicted, but let's support each other. I don't know right. if that would, exactly. you know, yeah. so we get have, the ball rolling. Um, we do have one student that's in contact with Tapestry and some other addiction centers to see what they can do. Um, we had our meeting last week, which is when we decided this was going to happen, so I haven't had a chance to talk to that student yet. Um, and then yesterday we talked about, uh, or we um, sent out an email to Ananda Lennox to see what she, the leader yep. of NPC. Yep. Um, and oh, hi! <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, anyways, uh, we haven't heard back yet. <laughs> but you might tonight. Maybe tonight, exactly. So uh, we'll see where that goes, I guess. But we definitely would love to talk with you and and see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks. Mr. Allen. I was just gonna um, ask if you think that your cohort may have been hit particularly hard. I feel like the education didn't start, like you were kind of at the, like the waves hit and our education wasn't keeping up with it and your peers were um, kind of caught in the, the period where we were still in the educating phase. And I, I see some districts are starting programs now as early as fifth grade about the dangers of vaping and I don't know what we're doing in the schools. Was that something you looked into, how early we're starting to talk about this? In our schools, yeah, um, I, I it's not something I looked into, but I haven't heard anything about what's being said. So, do you remember when the first time you were oh, given the message about when it? I was given the message? I think probably ninth grade. Ninth grade. Ninth grade yeah, so. when it was oh, okay, yeah. So pretty late. Doctor Provost, I just want to point out that I believe it was NPC. It might have been a different organization. Did an audit of our um, curriculum last year. And there were a number of strategies that they rated the district on. One was curriculum, one was social norming, and um, there may have been others, but the one of the, the um, dimensions definitely was environmental modifications. And that was the, the area where we came down the weakest was the environmental. So the results of the audit were that the curriculum was fairly strong and the social norm Peer pressure was fairly strong, but we hadn't done a lot to try to take control of the bathroom spaces. Um, so one of the reasons why um, the bathroom doors are now locked open was to try to uh, take away, as strange as it sounds, the sense of privacy within the bathrooms. Um, vaping detectors is another uh, strategy that could be uh, used to try to modify the environment where most of the vaping is going on we have had discussions about vaping detectors and haven't really um, been able to, to firmly decide whether or not we want to do that um, as the students point out this is an addictive behavior and one of the things that we're learning from our colleagues who have 
um, vaping detectors installed in their schools is students can become quite adept at defeating the detectors. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the best environmental strategies are, but that's where we're trying to focus right now. So, uh, so thank you for your presentation. And I didn't even realize Ananda was behind the podium, but I am the liaison on the Northampton Prevention Coalition. So I know that Ananda has gone with someone else into the middle school and presented on vaping. So we have um, started that a bit. There have been multiple presentations at the middle school on vaping um, that have not been very well attended, but they have been really informative. And um, Leslie Wilson said at the last one I attended in the spring that um, she, uh, they caught the first kid vaping in the bathroom in middle school since it's been 10 years since they caught someone with a cigarette. So just to show you how much we had really combated this issue and now thanks to vaping how how bad it is and it's back and we have to kind of start all over, not start all over again, but we have to continue to really do that work. So I think it's really important and I think the um, all these strategies around the bathroom is also an important thing to balance with we want to help kids with addiction and we also want to make sure that our kids who need to use the bathroom exactly use the bathroom. yeah and you know during the course of the day so I yes. think that's really important and um, I know I don't know about the letter Dr. Provost do you know about a letter going out to parents on yes so Ananda was working on a draft today which she sent me um, late this afternoon I haven't had an opportunity to, re to review it but since the author is here, she might be able to speak to its <laughs> contents. Do I stand? I, I, I so rarely go to the protocol. Yeah, to the yeah. podium. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just so um, they can record me. Of course. Um, do you want me to read it? Like, it's, it's just a draft of you can, you can, a letter to parents, or do you want me to answer questions first, or like what would be most helpful? Well, I was just going to add that in HAMP highlights this week, there was a big section on vaping that I thought was great. And I don't know if that's related to the letter at all no, or the, the letter not, just came but it about, was really informative. I get, um, really good. so my experience um, coordinating for the Prevention Coalition is that um, oftentimes my position is one of like, we should be aware of this and aware of that and aware of this. And it doesn't really reach this point of like people getting really energized about it until it gets kind of scary. So it makes sense to me that this is happening with vaping. Mm -hmm. And your age group is totally like kind of a lost generation because um, we started doing vape lessons at JFK about two or three years ago, mm -hmm. but we still have trouble with access. Like we, it's because we had two science teachers from JFK who said during our respiration section, we'd really like to have our kids, you know, be informed about vaping. So it started with me and my former colleague, Kate, doing it. And then we worked out this sweet situation where the Smith Folk students in health tech shop now do the presentation because they're way cooler and way more engaging than middle-aged women going into talk about vaping. So, um, so we have that going on. But I will say just in the two years that I've been present doing that, the first year we did it, most of the kids had tons of questions about vaping. They weren't really sure what it was. Right. This past year when we did it, like, I would say a third of the class did know what it was, had parents or friends or who were using it, and then there was actually a couple kids in there that were asked to participate because they knew they were like vaping and they wanted it to be an intervention. Mm -hmm. So it's changed a lot really fast. And I also know from keeping tabs on this for, for a few years now that it started off and there was no information. Like here I am a prevention professional mm -hmm. and people were still debating, is it aerosol or vapor? Like what's vapor? Is it water vapor? Is there nicotine in it? It should right. be fine. It's fun to do smoke rings, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. It's like a fidget spinner, but you can do it with your mouth. You know, <laughs> it was really yeah. hard to keep up with. Um, and then there was a little bit of side testing that found out that nearly everything, even everything labeled 0% nicotine, in fact, had nicotine. Like there were a couple cases where it said 0% and it was true, but overridingly it was that there's nicotine. So it felt like this whole tobacco industry thing all over again where it's like, let's get the young kids, let's um, appeal to their sweet tooth by making everything cherry flavored and bubble gum and mango. Tell them that it's nicotine free so their parents aren't going to freak out about it. But really none of this is accurate and now we have our new generation of right. Um, so what we've done in conjunction with the public school system is a lot of what you mentioned that isn't entirely effective for students. You know, definitely a lot of posters. We've tried tactics with social norming where we do do a we do a prevention needs assessment survey every two years and unfortunately the data for 2019 isn't out just yet 
Um, but we do have stats this year coming up soon on vaping percentages and what kids are saying. We've done posters on um, media tactics, the rule books that tobacco um, retailers use. We've done the quit lines and we've done um, also some social norming at JFK just asking, you know, like we had this one poster, I actually forgot to bring it, where it had just like 80% of JFK students would um, want to ask their friends to stop vaping if they were kind of thing. So we've done that, we've done the lessons at JFK. Um, we've done two billboards, we've done bus ads. Um, we do a whole bunch of social media outreach and as Rebecca had mentioned, we have had a lot of um, presentations for parents but they have been really lightly attended. Right. Like, um, we just did a health expo and we had 10 parents show up. Mm -hmm. And we were giving away prizes to like Look Park, um, Central Rock Gym, it was catered. Um, it's just really hard to get a crowd. We also had a couple with the PTO. Uh -huh. um, we've had um, collaborations with Cooley Dickinson Hospital. So I, I could go on and on, but um, and I don't want to because I know you guys have a, a big agenda. But I, I'll read the draft. So the letter, the idea of the letter came out just because when Charlie Baker came out with the ban, um, it's really easy for somebody in prevention to think everybody must know about this, but we weren't sure. So we um, we figured maybe parents need a direct mailing from the school that could address not only here's an epidemic, it's really scary. Um, what are the warning signs to look for if your kids are smoking? Where could you get help with cessation if your kids need it? And what has the public school system been doing? So yeah. it's a draft, but it just goes, Dear parents and guardians, according to the US Center for Disease Control, reports of vaping related lung illnesses have climbed to 1,080 cases. I have slightly different numbers than you. 18 deaths have been confirmed. Among them is the first death in Massachusetts announced by the State Department of Public Health of a woman in her 60s from Hampshire County. In response to these illnesses and deaths, Governor Baker has enacted a four-month ban of all vape sales in Massachusetts, including online sales to mass residents, in order to have time to do a thorough investigation into the causes of the illness and death. This issue is of paramount importance to our families, for the fastest growing population of vape devices users is our youth. Though the results of the Northampton Prevention Coalition's 2019 prevention needs assessment data have not been released officially, preliminary data points to a 100% increase in past 30-day vaping rates for eighth grade students, currently this year's freshman class at NHS. We are writing you today to draw attention to this nationwide epidemic and emerging public health threat so that parents and guardians will recognize the warning signs of vape use, know where to get help if their child is vaping, to know what actions NPS has taken to address this ongoing issue, and lastly, to know how you can help. So warning signs of vape use include frequent breaks to step out or go into another room to vape, smelling sweet, bloodshot eyes, though not in all cases, irritability, nosebleeds, especially in winter, being thirsty, caffeine sensitivity, and a persistent cough. Vape cessation programs for youth are still emerging and be, can be difficult to find. Start with your pediatrician who may prescribe nicotine replacement therapy and traditional therapy to help overcome cravings and triggers, and or try one of the new text-enabled helplines designed specifically for teens and young adults. Um, there's My Life, My Quit, the truthinitiative.org, this is quitting, and also um, Ditch Jewel, which you text to 88709. So what is NPS doing? There's a tremendous amount of misinformation on the health impacts of vaping. The Northampton Prevention Coalition and health professionals within NPS and our community want to have educational campaigns with accurate information available to all. To address this, the following actions, initiatives, and practices have been put into place. Um, the student handbook, first off, was updated to include vaping, because at first it just wasn't even in there, right? Yeah. Um, vape prevention billboards installed on Route 5s and 10, king size ads on the PVTA bus line. There was a large 6th to 12th grade um, family mailing. It was a postcard raising awareness about how vape has been packaged to look a lot like candy. So be on the lookout yeah, for that I kind remember. of tactic. Um, multiple poster campaigns at JFK and Northampton High on social norms, tobacco marketing tactics, quit lines, and facts about vaping. Multiple parental pre presentations. The lessons at JFK for the 7th grade. We actually also had an elementary school vape fact poster challenge. That was two years ago. And the latest thing that kind of ties in with what you're advocating for mm -hmm. is we are, we're doing a pilot program this year with this thing called e checkup to go okay. which is this online assessment that is a combination of self-reflection, motivational interviewing, and education so that these students who are like getting suspended for vaping are yeah. not only just being sent home and having their stuff confiscated and a call home, right. but they have this ability to compare their use rates with social norms there's questions about how much money are you spending on this are you having a hard time stopping mm -hmm. um, 
And so the final part of the letter just goes, how can I help? Um, so the health, safety, and well-being of our students are always a top priority. Vaping within the schools has proven to be a particularly daunting challenge. Parents and guardians can help us prevent vaping by engaging in the following activities. Talk with your students about vaping. Set expectations around vaping. Prevent devices from being brought into schools. Educate yourself and your family on the health risks. Join a group to help advocate for change on how these devices are sold and marketed to youth, such as parentsagainstvaping.org. Attend a Northampton Board of Health meeting when they cover laws on tobacco and vape sales. Join the PTO. Advocate or start a 84.org um, group, which is a tobacco and vaping advocacy group for youth, um, chapter at your student's school, um, and volunteer for the Northampton Prevention Coalition. <laughs> so um, I think I, I love that you are engaged on this topic. I think what we've been missing all along is student engagement, and I think that um, like, I mean, this is not your profession, right? So like if I'm telling you as a professional, it's been frustrating to try to get awareness about this is really dangerous. Yeah. I can imagine like you're just seeing it firsthand and going, you know, you don't need to have a degree to realize that this is bad for your friends. Right. But it takes um, all of us involved, I think, to actually make a mark and change things. Definitely. So. And, and we'd love to talk to you. As a yeah, I have. Are you Willa? I am not Willa. I'm Eleanor. Willa is our president. So Willa's the one who reached out to me. Yes. But yeah, I, I did reply to her. So oh, okay. I'll Perfect. just say, just yeah. call me up and I'll come meet with all Definitely. of you. Definitely. Yeah. I talked with her earlier today and maybe it was just timing it thing. Yeah, so I'm sure it was. <laughs> but but definitely thank you. And, and I think, yeah, we'd love to keep connecting and talking about it. So Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and one more question. Sorry. What was the... Um, the online program title what was which one for parents or for youth no for the youth who are like suspended the one oh the, in the e, it's e checkup to go okay thank you so much You're welcome. any other questions or comments to our student representatives Okay, so it sounds like you're going to be collecting some more data, maybe talking to the student body, getting some information. Yes. yes. Through a survey, and perhaps mm -hmm. uh, in the future you can come back and let us know what some more of your findings are. Definitely. Yeah. Our Great. Thank you. Good Thank you so much for being part of our meeting this evening. Uh, seeing no other business here on the agenda, motion to adjourn be in order? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? You say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. This meeting is now adjourned.